Welcome to Mortgages and More, your go-to podcast for the latest insights in the mortgage industry. Join us as we dive into expert advice, unveil actionable tips, and learn how to empower the next generation of home buyers. Get ready to elevate your knowledge and make those property dreams a reality. Let's get started. Let's do it. Alex, Let's get started. Alex. Yeah, man, that's that's uh, some good pump pump up music right there. That's great. Well, thanks to our own Kyle Draper for being the voice behind our intro video. I can feel it. Feel the yeah. passion. <laughs> Alec Hansen, it's been a long time coming to to be on screen with you. I, I follow your everything you're doing. Uh, love all your content. Love your energy and and the message you're putting out there. And super uh, super pumped to have you here on. One of our first episodes of Mortgages and More. Thanks for joining us. Absolutely, brother. It's great. It's great to be here. Thank you. You know, this, this, um, there's so many cool people that are truly leaning in and helping people think differently about this business going forward. And you're definitely on the forefront of that. <laughs> and what I want to do, you know, today is really kind of pick your brain on when you think of you know, our lending industry and, and those mortgage professionals, loan officers, mortgage advisors, we'll come back to that title in a minute. But when you think of that kind of role out there, I'm really, really curious, how, what do you think are the key changes that that, that role is going to undertake as we kind of morph into this, this, this new market where we have this next generation home buyer that we're all kind of, you know, seeking to engage with? I think it's gonna it's gonna come down to a, a very simplistic, but but like easy thing to say, hard thing to achieve. But I think it's gonna come down to influence at the end of the day. And so, you know, when you kind of, I have an interesting career path in mortgage. It's not that interesting. It's actually just a normal career path in mortgage. In the in the sense that you know, in the glory days pre smartphone, you know, we we had to run out and try to meet agents in the market in order to gain some of their influence yes. because you know they they would be going door to door and building community influence and reputation in order to get the trust of a of a customer to help sell or buy a home with them you know all of the uh i call it traditional but just this, this organic belly to belly strategy was what we had there there was no smartphone there was no internet to the capacity that there is today uh, the mls was private so you know a consumer didn't know it was for sale unless they looked at the newspaper so you know, if we wanted to get a piece of their influence and some of their referral, you know, we'd have to go meet them out in the world today. And so all of our strategies around originating and prospecting were developing influence or relationships with the high powered agents that controlled the customer. Right. And then, you know, you, you just kind of fast forward 20 years. I mean, obviously lots happened in 20, 25 years, but the main thing that's disrupted the traditional world, and it's not, gone we can talk about that too it's not just irrelevant but you know the customers now have access to dramatic amounts of information in their in this amazing phone in their pocket and that's opened up all new strategies on how to get in front of them and build that influence again so i think it's always been influence and relationship but now it's just how do we do that in an evolving world where the tools are different and the places people are playing are different i and i love that i and, and i I think you hit on this too. It's nobody's saying that the the tried and true path where you know referrals come from you know real estate partners is going to go away. I think it's yeah maybe maybe the the percentage of of a loan officer mortgage advisor's pipeline at any given time is going to be exclusive from that channel. Um, but it's really about the same thing that you do as a loan officer to build your brand with your real estate partners you should be thinking about doing at scale with consumers, right? Is that kind of what you're saying? Yeah, it, it's almost like there's there's more options now for a, a contemporary originator to go out and find their, their path forward. Because I, I know tremendous loan officers who are crushing it and, and their digital strategy is not that sophisticated or it doesn't exist at all. And there's some of the, these are some of the, the best originators in the world. I mean, doing like half a billion a year, a billion a year, like these are massive people who, when you go, where do you get your business? They're going to say, I get it from my real estate and my sphere of influence, my community, which is as old school as it gets. Right. And then at the same time, there's emerging opportunities with people who are building huge 
influence levels on social platforms or YouTube, and they're leveraging that to get to the consumer, and and they're, so they're doing it differently. And the, and the argument is, well, is there a better path? Is this better? You know, is this better than this? And I think that my response always is. Just find your own path and diversify so that you can have some protection against the market. Um, and I think it's about also kind of what levels of success do you want? Yeah. If you really want to play at the top levels over time, then you're going to need to be in multiple origination vertical strategies. You got to have multiple strategies. You can't have one thing you do. You should be strong in multiple things. So it's just my two cents, but I think there's just more ways to skin the cat, and that means there's more opportunity. And and you already hit on this. We're all walking around with this, oh, you know, crazy. studio in our pocket. It's not just crazy. our phone. It's not just our our email. It's not just a computer. It's literally a, a, a walking studio, right? You can yeah. do everything right from that phone. It's wild. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, I, I was just I, I I was out of town for the weekend, and I and I was sitting in my hotel room. I'm like, oh, I had an idea for a short piece of content, so I literally put my back to the glass overlooking the city beautiful sunrise coming over the city and i'm like here it is i, I got my studio because i've got my camera and my microphone right here so good now whether or not that video turns out to be worth a damn we'll see but <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean it, it's funny you mentioned that too because there, there are good ways to do things and, and not as effective ways to do things and the same way when prospecting or building relationships with a new agent there are things that are more acceptable and and more successful than certain strategies same thing translates to video there's certain things that are more you know strategic and thoughtful than the not so yeah i mean efficacy is always going to be a thing in all this stuff so when you when you think about video and in, in particular you know a, a loan officer's kind of personal strategy around creating video content yeah uh, I know what I went through when I made the commitment to do more video and be more present on LinkedIn for me is the is the platform. Yeah, great platform. When I when I first started, I was you know very anxious about it and spent probably way too much time over analyzing the words I was yes. going to say and you yes. know re re editing or re cutting and so uh, and today it's just like hit play, talk for forty seconds, and if it's good, it's good. If it's bad, it's bad. But it's going to go out there either way and. Uh, so for me personally, I think I find that uh, I like to balance maybe, you know, over the course of a of a week, having some really tight, well-produced content, but then a lot of very authentic, I'll call it off the cuff, kind of conversational content that I'm just putting out there. Right? What would, what would, how would you advise somebody like a loan officer that's just getting into this to, to start? Should they, you know, just be, turn, hit the button and talk or should they really... Yeah kind of think this thing through. Well, let me start with some advice around this. So um, everyone has to start. So, you know, I'm going to liken this back to, to prospecting agents because I think there's a, there's these themes that, that are universally true in this world. You know, I, I remember at 23 years old, vividly pulling up to one of the top realtors open houses on a weekend and I looked in and sometimes they're not there as people know, you know, but I looked in and I saw the top guy. This is one of the best agents in the market. And I've been trying to meet this person, but they're hard to meet. The top guys and gals are very busy. So they're not just sitting around. And I'm, I, I'm, I was too afraid of cold calling. So I refused to cold call them because I hated it. And I remember, tr I remember I literally parked outside, saw the guy in there, and then I drove away. I was too terrified to even go in there to meet this guy. I had parked the car. I was like ready to go. And then I couldn't do it. And, but I knew on the other side of success for me is I would have to do this. I'd had, I had, if I was going to, you can't not meet someone and right. get their business. Like you have to meet them. So eventually I was able to get through that. And I went out and met that agent, met a bunch of agents and built my business. So translating that forward to video and social and having a strategy, like you have to be in the water. If you're not in the water, you have no chance of ever getting better. You have no chance of perfecting a strategy for yourself. So people overthink things, as you probably know. And so just like you said, you know, people are like, oh, I filmed 400 videos. They all live on my phone. I've never posted one because I've, I'm too afraid. And I'm, I'm still learning my strategy. And I'm like, no, you're not. You're not even swimming yet. Right. You, you got to get in the water. And you, what happens when you get in the water is you'll start to figure out your voice. And exactly what you said, Brian, you're like, I kind of do this now. And this is where I feel more comfortable. And I do some stuff like this. I do some things like this. 
you're finding your voice and your strategy in the midst of being in the game. Yeah. And so I, I think everybody has to do that. And and because and that's the cool part about digital. There's so many strategies. You can have all scripted, pre-recorded stuff. You could go live. You can do thousands of different things. You can do skits. You can be funny. You can be thoughtful and serious. There's an audience for everybody, but you got to find out what your lane is. Don't copy someone else. Find your lane. And then over time, you can better unleash your authentic self and really put it out there. And then, then you watch your business just explode. But it, it's just, you got you to gotta swim. You got yeah. to put in reps. You got to practice. I love that. I love the uh, the swimming analogy too. It's it's uh, very visual. The you know, one thing that that I, again I go back to when I started this. I, I in addition to worrying about you know is this the perfect take and you know did the, did the words make sense. I I think I also over indexed on something new. So next week had to be different from last week and the week before. Totally. And and now honestly, I'm. Every week I'm talking about the same general topic, Dude. but just with, you know, with a slightly different, you know, set of words because everything's evolving in my head, but it's the same topic. I spend a lot of time talking about things that I'm passionate about and that align with our business, financial literacy, financial education, financial yep. preparation. And it, when I first started, I thought I can't keep saying the same thing over and over. And the more people I talk to, like yourself, that are experts in this, they're like, no, that's what your audience wants to and expects to hear from you. Keep saying it because <laughs> not everybody's listening every time. It's, 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 it's such a, so I have this, this like commentary around this topic that I'd love to share with people because they, that there's two things that are immensely true and, and counterintuitive that you have to hold in your hands at the same time. The first thing is that nobody cares about your videos. <laughs> and and so everyone freaks out because they're like, you've just been telling me, like when I do keynotes, like you've been telling me for an hour how important video is to my marketing strategy. And then you're telling me that nobody cares about my video. And then and then the but then I have to follow up and say, well, and, but the reality is is that the every single one of those videos is crucially important to your business. Life, life changingly important to your business. And they're like, How are you saying these two things? <laughs> but, it, but you have to understand the the psyche of, of, of how humans interact. And you have to understand the culture of the platforms. You know, these are scroll platforms. They're scroll culture. People are not consuming every piece of content on there. They're let, they're, but, but those impressions, I call them micro impressions, are, in, are occurring. And so, Brian, every time you put yourself out there and, and wear some vulnerability and share what you're passionate about, no, no, not everyone's tuning in. But, but those micro impressions are happening. And they're seeing your energy and they're seeing your enthusiasm and they're seeing the topic of what you're saying. And they're, they're getting something it's going in here. Yeah. And then over time, it's the same thing when I say someone to name an insurance company and these insurance companies just pop into your head because they've just beaten you down with repetition and consistency where the gecko lives in your brain now. Right. And, and, and so if you're building a personal brand and you want to increase your influence and you want to have more people be aware of you and what you do and, then, in a, then this repetition and consistency is crucial to that. And so it's not the one video that matters. It's the thousand videos over time that are life-changing in sales and marketing. And so you got to hold these two things in your hands at the same time, which gives you the freedom to say things like, dude, now I just, I just ship it. I film it yeah. and I ship it. And, and because you know, you're starting to tap into the truth that like, hey, this one video isn't what matters, even though it could, could go viral, could, it could. Likely, it's going to be another scroll point, and then through that, your brand, your reputation continues to extend, and then your business opportunities continue to extend with it. And so, both these things are universally true. Amazing. I want to I want to go back to the the visual that you gave us. You sitting in the parking lot of the open house, looking in the oh, window, yeah. seeing the target. There's the top producer. There's the guy, and you don't go in. So now, fast forward to today, right? 2024 when we publish this um the the reality of it is is you could you could now be in front of that top producer without going in the door by being present on the platforms that that top producer lives on right so yeah i i, I heard something over the weekend that uh, really resonated with me as i kind of thought about this conversation and you know cold calls really probably won't exist in the near term because 
using these platforms, you know, this conversation that you and I are having and sharing, um, we can always reference, you know, hey, if you you may have seen me on LinkedIn, and I, I do that now when I'm talking to perspe- prospective clients, I'll start by, hey, you might have seen me on LinkedIn, and a lot of times I'm self-deprecating. I, I apologize yeah. if I'm annoying you, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. But more often than not, they're like, yeah, yeah, I definitely see all your stuff. And so I don't, I, I think there's there's the, the the tool, this video tool can help eliminate ever having a cold call again if you're doing it effectively. Uh, un- unbelievably so. You know, the, the reality is, I don't think cold call will go away in that sense too, Brian, because I think people won't leverage the video opportunity that, yeah. that will let it go away. Because the ability to form what I what we could call digital relationships with anybody. I mean, that's how Kyle and I met. Like we we met on the internet. Yeah, um, same. Trying to put out content, and I was like, you know, that's you know, Brian, that's how you and I bumped into each other. So it's it's that world where if you want that for yourself, you can take it. But just like walking into that open house, it takes some immense amounts of vulnerability because you know that you're you're going to get rejected. You know yeah. that the person there doesn't really want to see you. They don't want to get harassed. They don't want someone to come talk to them and sell them and prospect them. But you can push through that by building a digital brand, a digital reputation. And then when you walk in there now and do the hard work, the actual sales process, the marketing is backing you up. Right. That's, that, that's the difference between sales and marketing. You know, marketing helps open the door. You still got to go in there and sell and showcase your value. But man, it can make it a lot easier if people know who you are. Love it. So last talk track I, I want yeah. to cover is, um, you know, a lot of, most of our audience is our loan officers and, yeah. and, and they span, you know, small mom and pop shops all the way to, to big organizations like yeah. yours, Loan Depot, right? How, how should loan officers be thinking about the balance of corporate, the corporate oh, brand, that. corporate marketing, and yeah. my brand, my personal brand? What's, what yeah. is that? In your mind, what does that look like? So I, I love this this comment. Um, first, let's just go with some basic fundamentals. Um, humans love brands. And I, I always find it so hilarious when people are like, it, it, the, the corporate brands don't matter. And I look at their shoes and they're rocking Nikes. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. what are you talking about? Like, like, think about Amazon. Like, people love brands. And, and Amazon killed your neighbor's hardware store, murdered right. them. That, like, your neighbor. And you delighted in doing it. So it's so I find it very ironic when people are like, well, corporate brand. I'm like, no, stop it. Humans love brands. Oh my God, look at sports teams. Those are brands right. and players come and go. And sometimes, but people that are die hard on their team, it's not the player that matters, it's the team. So th- there's a universal truth there. And consumers take a lot of like trust in brands. And they know that if I go to this store, I'm gonna, I know what I'm getting, the consistency, the brand is there, et cetera. Now, at the same time, man, humans love humans. Oh my God, we love humans. And I, I have this universal truth of people work with people they like, know, and trust. And so th- those things are all, they all matter. And this is where you really have to unpack, like, it's okay to be universally human. It's okay to be proud of where you work and be proud of the team you're on and be building something cool with other people. And it's great to be proud of who you are as a professional and the unique experience and consultative wisdom you provide that's different than the guy down the street, even if you are wearing the same jersey. And it's also okay to like wine instead of cocktails or like video games or or over sports. Like you you can be a complex person and you can have complex things. And that's mainly what I preach into a ton is when you're building personal brand or you're doing video or you're out there selling or marketing, whatever, you should showcase your, your, your real humanity. And that means be proud of the of the company you're helping build. And at the same time, be proud of who you what you bring to the table. And all those things can be universally true and great at the same time. And so, Brian, I think the trap people fall into is, and I see it all the all the time, and I, I have to lead against it at Lone Depot specifically, which is like, guys, I can't see your humanity through the Lone Depot graphic you're posting. And I love the graphic because my team made it. It's great, yeah. but I can't see you. And people do business with people they like, know, and trust. Now, they also like, know, and trust brands. But, like, why aren't you showing up? And so, like, uh, this is a small thing. But, like, as we release new product and graphics now, we've started releasing green screen backgrounds to, in, in, as, along with flyers yeah. and graphics and all that stuff. Because now, I, if I can push up them a little bit and say, look, 
we just launched a, an, an amazing FHA zero down product and it's amazing for the right people and it's called access zero. It's awesome. And I'm like, but don't just post the graphic. I want you to be in front of the green screen with the graphic details behind you. And I want you explaining who is this product good for and who should not maybe look at this product and what, what niche does it serve? And what are the details? I want you to, to, to bleed through the screen. So, I think that's the the fault that, that I call out is you know you're hiding too much behind this stuff. Yeah. When, when you should let your humanity shine. Um, but then you know the, when when people get so ridiculous like you know brands don't matter and I'm like, bro, <laughs> look at your shoes. Like of course yeah. they matter. Don't, don't yeah, say we, stupid things. We all prove that that wrong every day, right? Every yeah, I mean they, they they should work together. They should be symbiotic. Like let's just let's just go with that. You know, it, it, an individual loan officer might have a really hard time being the major league baseball sponsor, but Lone Depot could do it. Yeah. And then, and then you can benefit from that. So how do we make these things syno- like symbiotic? And that, that's kind that. of the fun side of this thing. I love that. Well, man, you, uh, you nailed it. You did not disappoint. Um, yeah. I'm so glad we had this opportunity to finally get on screen together and have a conversation. Yeah, I, I look forward to many, many more of these now. Let's do it. I got over my nerves. I made the cold call and, and, and asked, <laughs> you to, asked you to join me on here. So, <laughs> Love it. Thank you, Brian, for having me, dude. Appreciate it. Everybody, thanks for coming on. And uh, uh, come back next week. We're going to have another insightful conversation. Again, our goal here is to, to give you something actionable to take away in your business and practice to help you grow every day. Alec, thank you so much. See you, buddy.